you very much for the invita invitation. Um, my name is Camilo. Um, and Camilo. I mean, Juan Camilo. John Camilo. Camilo in English is, doesn't exist, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm from Colombia. I was born in Colombia, but I live here for 16 years. For, I mean, for 21 years in Spain. Um, I wasn't supposed to be here because I'm not part of a speaker's university, <laughs> actually. But a friend of mine, Lance Constantine, uh, the founder of a Speakers University, called me because he, he couldn't come. So he told me, Camilo, can you make me the favor? It's the necklace. It's the necklace. Ah, okay. It's, it's this. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I'll take the other mic. Okay, now it's better, isn't it? <laughs> Great. So uh, I wasn't supposed to be here, as I told you. And I have to say that this is my first time speaking in English in public. So <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is my first time. So thank you very much for your comprehension. I'm sorry for my English. As Mark Anthony would say, my English is not very good looking. So <laughs> uh, yeah. Never say, OK, thank you very much. <laughs> that helps, helps a lot. Uh, I was saying that I was born in Colombia. I've been living here in Spain for 21 years. I'm married to a beautiful gypsy woman that I love <laughs> with all my heart. And we have a daughter. She's five. In June, she's going to get uh, five years old. And I call her. She's my, it's an Spanish word. It doesn't exist. But I call her my Gita Lombiana, which is like gypsy and Colombian, you know? So. <laughs> Uh, for me, it's a pleasure to be here. I, I'm feeling like, you know, it's such a responsibility for me to be here, and I'm honored to be part of it. And I was uh, telling you that this is my first time speaking in public, so in English. I'm used to speak, I'm used to preach, I'm used to mm, speak in public, but in Spanish. So thank you for your comprehension. I'm here to represent Speakers University and my friend Lance Constantine, the founder of Speakers University, um, he asked me to speak you on the nine steps of public speaking. Uh, I wasn't able to come here uh, yesterday, neither this morning because I had to work. And when I sat down and I saw all you uh, speaking and giving all those conferences, I, I was wondering maybe this should have been the, the first, <laughs> the first one, you know, <laughs> because you know all of you like you know everything I'm gonna say, so I don't know. <laughs> If it's really needy, because <laughs> all of you have done so, so good. I've, I've learned a lot. Uh, I have to say I've learned a lot, not only of your messages, your, what you were saying, but uh, the way you do it. So thank you very much. I've been learning a lot. <laughs> so Speakers University, you can find all the information here. This is the, the website. I don't know. Can you hear me? Uh, good? Yeah? Okay. So this is the... the um, the website, um, and uh, I'm speaking on the nine steps of public um, speaking, okay? So it's gonna be divided in three groups. Sorry for my English again, eh? Um, how can I uh, switch it? Ah. Is it? Oh, okay. It's going to be like this? OK, good. <laughs> so let's go with the first group. The first group is word choice, which all of you have done so good. <laughs> we find storytelling, emotion, and repetition. It's like what you say, repeat after me this and that, repeat after me this and that. So that repetition, OK? But let's begin with storytelling. This is the art of story, the, the art of storytelling engages audiences members from start to finish. For example, Sylvia, I don't know if she's here, uh, she's not here, she told us her story. And all that she did was telling us her story, and that was great. Because I just wanted to go to the bathroom, but I couldn't. <laughs> because I needed to know how it would end. <laughs> so she is a perfect example, and I have to say, I will take advantage of all what has happened here because you have made me um, such a great favor because all of you have been good examples. So, uh, the art of storytelling engage, engages engages this is the word engages audience members from start to finish. Storytelling is a mental picture story 
with a moral ending. This is important because people will keep in mind and they will go home with the last thing you uh, told them, you, you teach them. Okay, so you need to finish like up here, you know? You need to have a moral ending, which all of you have done. And thank you once again for that. Then we have emotion. Emotion within your speech inspires a, heart, a heartfelt reaction through positive word choice. And this is very, very important for us, for example, for us the preachers, because we need to make people feel comfortable and to be empowered as you was teaching, you know, and we need to bring a positive side of what's happening, even though uh, we go through bad moments, but we are not our bad moments, okay? So through positive word choice, emotion is a strong feeling that creates connection. And I feel connected to some of you who have spoken about your life stories. So you've done it really good, okay? Congratulations <laughs> for that. <laughs> And then we go with repetition. This is what I was telling you. For example, when we, uh, this is something we use a lot, we the preachers do, and we say, repeat after me, raise your hand, and repeat after me. For example, I am what I think I am. Uh, or I am not what my bad moments uh, have been, for example, no? So repetition is something that you already uh, used very, very good. Am I going too fast? No, oh, sorry. I'm, Really nervous because I don't know if I'm speaking good. You maybe are not understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I, I guess I will start preaching in English as well. So, <laughs> Voice dynamics. Okay. This is the second group of um, uh, speaking in public. So we have change of tone, dramatic pause, pause, and voice projection. Um, let's go with the first one, change of tone. It's tone inflection that keeps the interest of your audience. You know, I, can, I cannot stand here at the time it is and stay here like for 15 minutes speaking this way because, you know, it has been really good, such a great time. <laughs> you look tired. You just want to go to the hotel room or to know Madrid, which is beautiful, by the way. You have to go <laughs> and visit Madrid. No, I, I need to change the tone of my voice because sometimes maybe I need you to learn something, so I need to go slow and tell you the principles. I will tell you something I need you to, you know, like swallow is the word, to swallow, okay? Um, and sometimes I need to get to your emotions, so I need to rise up my voice and like shout out and say, yes, you can, for example. <laughs> so I can go just in one tone all the time, because change of tone is a way of speaking that gives a range of vari variety in the, tone, in the tone of a speaker's voice. And this is something you also have done, all of you, really, really good. Then dramatic pause. Dramatic pause makes the audience reflect and put emphasis on what was said in a previous statement. So when, I, when you have something really important to say, you know, like the core of your message, you need to say it and wait like for three to five seconds, but no, do not do this like you say the word and then you start one, two, three, four. No. <laughs> not this way. You need to flow with what's happening in the crowd. So you say something which is really important for you, you look at the people, you stop for a moment, and then you repeat it again. Okay? So this is dramatic pause because if you start speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and all the time you're saying things and all the time you're trying to, to feel those uh, voice, those silence which make you maybe uncomfortable, uh, people won't understand what you're trying to say. So you need sometimes to just stop, say something important, and make there's no, uh, a dramatic pause. Pause, is, is it say? Pause? Pause or pause? pause. pause. <laughs> Thank you, I'm learning, I told you. Dramatic pause is a short moment of silence of three to five seconds between a word or statement that creates an intriguing suspense, okay? Then we go to voice projection. Voice projection is the ability to make your voice create a climax moment during your speech 
that leaves audience members at the edge of their seats. I don't know if I will be able to do this, but <laughs> maybe another time. Voice projection is a climax moment in the speech that places a strong emphasis on a word or statement. As I told you, all of you, at least all those that, I, that I've seen, have done it really good. You know, there's a moment in your speaking time when you have to say something that people want to know more about it. They need to, because you carry a message. All of you, all of you have a message. And people will see and they will learn what you're trying to, to show them through how you do it. You are the most important part of your message. So you need to take the people, you know, like they want to know more about what you're trying to say. And voice projection is a climax moment in the speech that places a strong emphasis on a word or statement. Then we go to body language. We have hand gestures, eye contact, and facial, or facial, I don't know, expressions, okay? Hand gestures, many times we don't know what to do with our hands when we are speaking to a crowd. It happens to all of us. Don't feel ashamed or shy, don't feel <laughs> guilty, because it happens to all of us. So that's why many times we love using microphones, because at least we have one hand <laughs> with something we can hide behind. Many times people, when they have to use a microphone, they use it like this way, and they are behind it, and they are hiding from the crowd. And this is the place they feel safe, you know? Many times, we, uh, with the preachers, we hide behind the altar, and we are like this. We don't want you to see me. We don't want you to see, look at me. I'm just here behind what I'm trying to say, you know? So, uh, hand gestures, you need to be open to the crowd, okay? You need to be open. You need to welcome them with your hands. You need to know what to do with your hands when you're trying to say something. That's something you also did really, really good. <laughs> Okay, so with your hands, don't be nervous. You can, you can, you know, you can uh, do hand gestures, but not too much because it will distract the people. Okay, now I have a microphone. I have these things, so it's good for me because I'm hide behind, <laughs> behind this. But you need to um, be in control of your hands. Okay, you need to be open. This is how I would uh, resume it. You need to be open to the people. You cannot go like this. I have to use the microphone, but if I wouldn't, that's why I would like to use that. I would have my hands like, you know, do you understand? This is what happened to me, okay? Sometimes you are high, sometimes you are low. I'm using my hands. And for sure, you will remember more what I've done with my hands than what I've said. Many times, okay? So use your hands to help to get the message. Hand gesture is a movement with the hand to express a specific meaning, okay? Then we go with eye contact. Not much to say. I guess that I've looked at the eye of at least two or three of you. You know, when I have to speak to a big crowd, <laughs> I have like, um, uh, this is a tip that I use. I take out my glasses so I can see <laughs> anything. <laughs> Maybe the light is in front of me, and I'm like, I'm not looking at anyone, but I'm looking to everyone, you know? So I do like this, and I start saying my, my sermon or my whatever, and I'm talking to all of you. I can see you. <laughs> but, I, but, you know, many times you feel like people are looking at you, and you feel like, oh. so, so I don't know what's the word. Uh, like in a jail, you feel shy, you feel, okay, so if you, if you use um, glasses, you can take them off. <laughs> and you will feel maybe more comfortable. But you need to look. I also used to speak to small groups, and you can't speak to a small group. I will, I will use my friend, and you can start all the time speaking to him. You know, many times you are trying to speak to a group, and you feel um, comfortable looking at only one, pe one person. <laughs> and maybe you are making that person feel weird. Like, is it all for me? <laughs> what did I do? Am I guilty of what? <laughs> 
So you need to look at the eye of at least two or three people, if you can, to all of them. I'm looking even to those eyes, to his eyes, to all of your eyes. At least I'm trying to. So that, that's something you need to do because the moment you look at some people, some person eyes, it's like they get the message. They get involved in what you are doing, you know? You get close to them, you connect to them, okay? Because when we speak to a crowd of people, it's that, people. And people connect to you not by, not by what you know, but by you. How do you connect to them, okay? I will use them because I don't see. <laughs> if not, okay, let's go. So eye contact, ah, and something, as I was telling you, not more than three to five seconds because maybe you will make that person feel like uncomfortable. Why are you looking at me? What did I do? <laughs> um, um, I guess this is the final one. Fa facial expressions, facial expressions makes your presentation become more believable to your audience. Facial expression is a look on somebody's face that conveys or inspires, inspires a thought or emotion. Can I tell you something, just to finish? Get used to smile. Get used to smile. Because when you smile, like people see you closer. They feel comfortable. Maybe um, they are having a bad day, and just with your smile, they feel good. They will feel better. And if you are here, and I'm trying to teach you, not teach you because you already know this, but <laughs> just to speak on how to speak in public. But if you do it smiling, if you do it with your hand that accompanies your message, it's going to be more effective to the crowd, okay? So, for example, I would say, uh, every time you try to speak to someone, of course, if you are talking about something bad that happened to you, in, in order to use it as an example, you won't be smiling. <laughs> you, 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 I, I don't know if I'm making myself clear, yeah. but um, if you are trying to say something we before spoken about um, to use um, positive words. So if you, if you use positive words and you are not smiling, you are like lemon, uh, uh, lemon, <laughs> you see, does it fit in English as well? Lemon face, it won't get to the people. <laughs> lemon face, I've just invented. <laughs> okay. I, I need to do something because I'm, you know, I, I've never spoke, spoken in English in public, so <laughs> this is kind of joke. And I don't know if it is solved. Okay, that's solved. So I hope it may have been helpful for some of you. But as I told you, you already do it really, really good. <laughs> I really believe that I would have needed to be here the first. <laughs> but well, you all, all of you do it really good. So thank you for your time. We are enjoying. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. You did so great. Okay. Like this?